<clears throat> Shame he isn't available right now. No. Well, hello there. Um, this is on our Facebook page. I was trying to do the streaming for um, um, my YouTube channel, but it doesn't seem to be working. So I guess we're just going to go live with this one this morning. Sorry about that. <coughs> Bless the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good this morning. This is uh, Pastors and Prophets Bill and Esther Emmons coming to you live from our Facebook page, <laughs> church Facebook page. Glad that you could join us. Um, always a pleasure. To yes. share the truths of the kingdom and share the word of God with people online. Hang on, let me pull this thing. We're going to chat for just a second. Okay. Let people... Um, whoops, sorry about that. Boy, home studio. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Bless the Lord. Good morning, all of you. Good, good morning, good morning. Good to see you. Bless the Lord. Let me... Uh, I'm trying to straighten this thing up. We've... Uh, sorry about that. Not professional, but we're doing the best we can with what we've got. Bless the Lord. Um... There we are. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Nice to see all of you signing on. Sorry, I was a few minutes late today. Uh, we were busy. Top of the morning to you, Ed. God bless you. Nice to see you. So we are here. Um, thank God things are finally beginning to open up, and we are so yes. grateful. Um, my, Our hope is that we heard a very interesting teaching yesterday by David Jeremiah on seclusion and what God is, what God does typically when people are in seclusion. And um, that teaching, let me, still trying to get this straight. That teaching really had an interesting perspective um, in that we all know that uh, the, if you remember the um, teaching that came from Dr. Mike Evans, just, it's good, Esther. Okay. Remember the teaching that came from Dr. <laughs> Mike Evans? He said, look, God is the one that shut your church down. And because he's trying to get the people's attention, it's a, it's a reset. And David Jeremiah had this interesting teaching that was sent to us by friends of ours, uh, Highland and Rita Slobotkin. They're Messianic pastors, rabbis out in um, Washington Se State. Seattle. Seattle, yeah. And um, it was by Dr. David Jeremiah. And it was just, he talked about this whole issue of what God does in people's lives when he puts them in seclusion. So our challenge has been, we've been crying out for, for years, you know, God, we're too busy. There, we've got too many things that, that are going on. All this stuff is happening. Uh, we don't have time for this. We don't have time for that. There's no time for family meals. I mean, we have all this stuff that's been going on. And now all of a sudden, we do have the time. Isn't that awesome to know that you have had time set apart now? And if you view it as a seclusion unto God, all right, it is not a punishment, if you will, um, but it is God resetting the church to allow us to take the time that we need. Yeah. And so um, I, I, our prayer is that this time of seclusion that we've been in, that it's really been good for you, that it's causing you to grow strong. It's number one, drawing you closer to God so that when, uh, as we're now getting ready to launch out of this thing, um, and again, what, the, what caused it, whether it was the manipulation of man or a demonic attack or it was God that allowed it, whatever the case is, we can get the benefit. Doesn't the word of God say that he causes all things to work together for the good? All things. That means this thing. All right. That means the worst circumstance you're going through. He causes it to work together for the good to those that what? To those that love God and those that are called according to his purposes. Well, how do I get called according to his purposes? Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit today, about hearing the voice of God and knowing that I am, I'm walking according to his purposes. So we're really excited about this service today. Um, I've got a few announcements I want to run. That was a little free sermon for you as we're watching people signing on. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, as you know, uh, I see Sarah and John are our head deacons. There are still things that need to be done in our building. Our spring cleanup has been done a little differently. We've set it up where one or two families at a time could come in as they were able to, and they could clean certain areas of the church. We were sanitizing things, and uh, um, as you know, we're going through a sanctuary um, uplift as well, and we're in, right in the middle of that right now. So this pause that we've been in actually has been a good thing for us because it's allowed us to redo our sanctuary with a minimum of conflict for services. So we're still in the process of that. It's not done yet, but we're getting there. So it's been a good thing. But the cleanup that has to go on, um, there's a sign-up list with John and Sarah. I know there's one in the church. You can send them a text 
or give them a call and they'll tell you the things that need to be done. Um, no, we're not in our building yet. Thank God that President Trump has opened the door and declared that churches are essential. And what's Hallelujah. neat is we've all known they've always been essential. The problem is our governor didn't recognize that point. And so now that President Trump has said, look, I I'm recognizing churches and, and the houses of worship uh, play a vital role within our society. That's and right. yes, they do. No matter what leftists think, no matter what atheists think, the church plays a ma major role in the emotional, physical, and spiritual life of the country. Our founding fathers knew it. Um, those principles were fought for during the Revolutionary War and during the Civil War, and we are fighting for them again now. So thank God we have a yeah. president that recognizes um, the importance, the vitality, and the vibrance, and the importance, essentiality of the church. So we are in the process of getting our building opened. It's a step-by-step -step process, so we're asking you to be patient. We're asking you to um, bear with us as the elders and the deacons and my wife and I set the process up so that we know we're going to open up in phases so that people feel comfortable. You know, whether this corona thing, we know that portions of it were real. We also know that portions of it were blown out of proportion. That's not the discussion here. The discussion is we're going to obey the law and we're going to do our best to open according to the guidelines that have been established. And, and that's the right thing to do. So we're asking you to be patient with us next Sunday. Um, we will have a, a very a small group of people at church, and that will be our elders, deacons, and our worship team to have that as an initial service. And we're looking forward to that. Everyone will be socially distanced the way they're supposed to be. Uh, windows will be open. We'll have pl plenty of fresh air. Um, and again, we're, we're, things are already being sanitized in the church, and so that's not going to be an issue. Um, and so we're asking the bulk of the congregation Wait a little while. Let's let us open things up a line, line by line, precept upon precept is what scripture says. So as we understand the guidelines the CDC has established, we will then understand how to open our church so that we're not and we're not in violation of the law because that's not our desire. But our desire is to have freedom of expression, yeah. our First Amendment rights, um, and our right to gather and worship. Bless the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Andrew. Glad you're watching. God bless you. Um, so let me hit the rest of our announcements. Um, people have asked about a bonfire. Out back, plenty of space, and we can do that. We're going to work that out with Pastors Chris and Jessica Bird, and we'll let the church know. We're going to come, bring your lawn chair. We're going to have a great time when we, when we set that up. Um, let's see. Also, online giving. As you know, um, like any uh, 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 corporate gathering, the church receives tithes and offerings. Uh, we don't, it's not a social club, you know. Uh, we don't take dues. There's no penalty. The bottom line is you give because this is your church or your church that you view online. Maybe you don't have a good local church and you view us as it. You're free to give. Um, the giving can be done online through our website, which is www.lifecc.org. And there's a donate button. You can click right on that, and there is n it'll work fine. If you want to mail your tithes or offerings in, you are certainly welcome to do that. To mail them in, it's Life Christian Center or Life Christian Center Church, P.O. Box 268, Johnstown, New York, 12095. God bless you. And, and we, we've watched, you know, our God has really blessed us in this time. Yes. You know, our church finances have been good. Um, and because of all of you, um, people in and outside our local church have just been wonderful and they've been gracious. Um, we are glad and honored to pastor such a wonderful group of people. And if we're your online pastors, we're proud and glad to be that as well. So you know that we're always going to do what's best for our congregation. We're going to pray and we're going to seek God and then we're going to move as he lays it out for us. Yes. So I would encourage you be in prayer with us, you know? Um, the Bible says that uh, we ought to uh, pray for those that are in authority. You know, we are the spiritual authority if this is part of your church. You need to be praying for the authority of the government, for our president and the congressmen 
and governors, doesn't matter whether you agree with their policy or not, you're still supposed to pray. And so let me encourage you. Also, it says pray for one another. So we want to encourage you as we wrap up these announcements. Listen, prayer is the essential. We are a house of prayer. My yeah, wife has are. done a great job of establishing that. And uh, prayer is the lifeblood of our yeah. church. So get engaged in prayer. Get engaged in our prayer times. We have them at Tuesday at 1130. Zoom My wife meeting. runs uh, uh, the, the uh, meeting, Zoom meeting. Zoom meeting. Um, and you can find that link, link on our church's website. Uh, Wednesday night, it's, uh, we have a, a prayer meeting. And that is a Zoom meeting also for right now. And that is, again, the link will be posted on our church's website. And you can click on that, come into our waiting room, and we'll let you in if we know who you are. If we don't know who you are, we're not going to let you in. That's just the way it works. That's safety and precaution. Also, <coughs> um, on, uh, let's see, let's see, this Tuesday, um, a reminder, our worship team is actually meeting to set up our platform and to run over the music for Sunday. So we'll be at church this Tuesday evening with our worship team. Socially distanced, everything will be the way it's supposed to be. So we're encouraging you, the worship team, come and uh, let's let's put together uh, under the guidance of Pastors Chris and Jessica um, a great worship service for Sunday morning. Uh, Bless the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see what Zoom did I what meeting did I miss? Um, and eventually oh. we're we're going to be shifting. Yes. Um, over to the church, yep. but we we think we'll also be doing the Zoom meeting yes. with, on Tuesday morning, we're going to be shifting over to the church to do that prayer and mentoring time, house of prayer and mentoring time, but um, we believe that, that we will do it in conjunction yeah. with the Zoom yeah. as well. So, um, because we've been having an amazing time because more have been able to gather. Yeah. And I don't know if we'll do that on Wednesday night as well. Uh, I think we might. Um, we will we'll look at it. Um, we may include the Zoom meeting so that those that can't physically get to church, uh, maybe you're busy, maybe you don't feel well, whatever the case is, um, you can still view it and participate through Zoom. So we're, we're going to set that up. We'll let you know. God bless the Lord. <coughs> Good morning, Christine. Um, grateful for all of that. All right. I don't think I missed anything. If I did, Pastors Chris and Jessica can go ahead and type that in. Uh, our, we're doing the best we can, but we are looking forward to uh, oh, yes. seeing the church gather together. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as is the habit of some. You know, we've been forced into it, but now the door's open so that things are gonna change, and we're looking forward to it. My last encouragement for you today is uh, be sure to get out there. Today, it's gonna be a gorgeous, beautiful day. Be sure to get out there and enjoy this weather. Let me get rid of this little thing here. There we go. Be sure to enjoy that weather and uh, get out there, get some sun. In fact, one of the major things that kills off this nasty uh, COVID thing is actually sunlight. So it's the best thing in the world for you to do is get out there in the sun. Bless the Lord. Well, hallelujah. <clears throat> What a great day. I'm so glad that you're here. We're going to do a little bit of worship right now. In fact, I'm going to let my wife open us up in, in prayer, and we are going to go from there. Oh, praise you, Lord God. We just thank you. Heavenly Father, we just love you so much. Father God, King Jesus, and precious Holy Spirit, we love everything about you. Wow, the three and one and you unify us and you're doing that today as we worship and with everyone that's joining us thank you thank you we honor you today may we be a pleasure to you dear god as we enjoy the pleasure of your presence welcome in all your goodness and glory in your beautiful name jesus praise you lord thank you lord Hallelujah.
deepest part of our being to our core with the power of your love. We're so grateful, dear God, for your greatest gift from above to each and every one, Lord. Hallelujah. And the gift that knits us together with you and one another as nothing else can do. Praise you, Lord.
praise you, Lord. Father, we thank you that we feel your presence. Mm. Mm. That you are so good. Hallelujah. What a privilege we have mm. to worship you, God. What a privilege praise we have you, to Lord. serve you. Lord, no matter what comes, you are good. Yes. Mm. Thank you. And you love us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, receive the, the word that we're sharing today mm. uh, with th those that are watching and those that are of our own congregation, God. Let that word come forth with Hallelujah. truth, with a healing touch, God. We're grateful yes. for it in Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the praise Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, praise God. Oh, the precious sound of his voice. Hallelujah. Which we were singing, being directed by the sound of his voice today. Yeah. And that was actually everything that was coming out was the Lord was showing me, the Holy Spirit was showing me was the song of all songs, the song of love. He was adorning us with his love. That's one of the things that's so amazing about joining together. We're, we've been joining yeah. together online, yes. but uh, we are excited. We're excited to get together face to face as God directs, as my husband was saying. And um, it's exciting because God's there and his love is there. And he yeah. knits us together with the power of his love. Yes, he does. And the sound of his voice has the power of his love in it. And there's nothing that holds us together more than that. The power of his love. Wow. Wow. Praise you, Lord. And thank you for the sound of your voice, Lord, that carries the power of your love that knits us together. Mm. That brings healing. It's healing to our souls. Yes. It's healing to our mind. We, boy, we need that. Our mind, our emotions, our physical body, everything. There's so many, there's so many voices. Yep. Excuse me, Esther. I'm sorry. Yes, dear. There there's so many voices that are out there now. There's a there's a battle. We yeah. all are very aware of the intensity of the battle. But it's the sound of his voice mm. whew, that settles everything down and brings us to his rest. Amen. And changes everything. And uh, as we, we're preparing, God's preparing us to come together again and uh, face to face and uh, to comply with what's being directed by the governing authorities. But um, we thank God that the highest governing authority yes. is the power of love <laughs> that it's knits us together. Yeah. Always is. Yes. And so um, this came to me from... Uh, God directed me to Psalm 133. Uh, this is what we've experienced all along. We're very blessed to have such a loving church. Yeah. Such a loving church um, that has come together in unity. And this describes where we've been and where we're going. And this is Psalm 133, and it says, How truly wonderful and delightful to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. It's as precious as the sacred scented oil flowing from the head of the high priest Aaron, dripping down upon his head and running all the way down to the hem of his priestly robes. In other words, that, that anointing oil that was sacred and set apart flowed easily down his body and being and it was sacred and set apart and it was fragrant unto the lord you know that's what our unity is like yeah. before the lord it's it's we experience it because he's bestowing it upon us and then we we express it to him and express it to one another yeah. it's it's experiential and we all know you know after we've been with God and been with one another. And when we, we leave the house of God, leave the services, we've been changed. Mm. You know, there's nothing like it. That's one of the reasons. <clears throat> that's one of the reasons church is essential. <clears throat> it's essential because we have a relational experience with yeah. God and one another when we are there, you know, and healing comes. Deliverance comes. Everything we need comes. It says in Isaiah 56 that uh, there's joy 
in God's house of prayer. We are a house of prayer. Yeah. You know, whether we're, we're having our Sunday service or any of the other services, that is what we are. And we are honored that God has called us that. Praise his holy name. And then it goes on to say, this heavenly harmony can be compared to the dew dripping down from the skies upon Mount Hermon, refreshing the mountain slopes of Israel. Mm moistening everything, making it tender, you know. The voices, the voices that are opposing the things of God now, they're, they're angry because God, God is, God is prevailing. Yeah. And we praise God for that. So, so we need to be with him and one another to, to experience what he's bringing forth in our lives and this sweet harmony, this tenderness, um, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. God calls us to be sweet like him. He's sweet. He's tender. There's no, no hardness of heart in him whatsoever. And we stay sweet and tender even when we hear, when we hear opposing voices coming against us. And we know they're attacking Jesus and not us personally, but it can feel sometimes like they're attacking mm. us. But when we have that tender heart, we can love on them. We can pray for them. And then who knows if they won't turn and come to the Lord yeah. and become tender themselves. Yeah. That special place, it says, from this realm of sweet harmony, God will release his eternal blessing, the promise of life forevermore. Mm. Hallelujah. That blessing includes everything. It doesn't leave anything out. You know, we are not moved by fear. Thank God yeah. because of him. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power. This is what scripture says. He's given us the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And when we connect with him in this place and with one another, everything we need comes down. The promise of the eternal blessing, the promise of life forevermore, unified by him and led by the sound of his voice. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. Yeah. And God welcomes us into that amazing, miraculous unity. And everything changes, but it's all directed by the sound of his voice, which is significant for all all of us to hear yeah you know we're, we're grateful that we are honored to lead by hearing the sound of god's voice we're grateful for that but we know that god is calling everybody every man woman and child all the family of god our life christian center church family everybody to hear the sound of god's voice yeah. for themselves yeah. it's it is of the utmost important because then when you hear that voice for yourself, you know the truth that he is leading you to. And of course, it will be an agreement. It will be an agreement with the word that is written in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it will be an agreement with the family of God. Yeah. That's that sweet place of unity that, that makes the difference. That where, that's where the blessing is. That's where the power mm -hmm. is to annihilate every contrary thing, all strife, confusion, destructive thing, and, and COVID. Because no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come nigh our dwelling. Again, our hearts, we don't, we don't say it, uh, we don't say it in, in a cavalier way. Our hearts are broken for all of those have died and lost loved ones. We have compassion. Mm -hmm. We have compassion. But we want to bring healing. And God has healing yeah. because Jesus took the stripes on his back for our healing. Think about the sound of God's voice. And all of creation came into existence simply because of the sound of his voice. Yes. Um, um, Jesus stands at the front of the boat in the middle of this horrible storm when his disciples are, are the storm is not only external, but the storm was in them as well. See, a storm comes... But Jesus speaks and he yes. says to the storm, peace be still. Yes. What that does 
is it calms the storm in us. Yes. You have to understand, you know, there's always a dual storm. And a storm can be raging around you, but if you hear the sound of his voice, you're at peace on the inside. Yeah. You find the place of rest. And so his voice is essential to living a life that's filled with peace. Yes. You know, when I when I I'm in contact with people who they're fighting and they're angry and they're contentious and they're filled with fear. It's because I realize I have compassion on them because I realize they don't know how to hear his voice because right. if they heard the voice of Jesus, they wouldn't be speaking from a place of fear. They wouldn't be speaking from a place of contention and, and fighting and arguing. It just wouldn't be there. Yeah. So that's why we felt this message was so important because yes. once you hear his voice, that peace that passes all understanding comes and yes. it doesn't matter what all the voices around you are screaming because you hear his voice above all the others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and that voice has gone in to the deepest part of your being. Yeah. Because you've taken the time. We've taken the time to be with him so he can do that. And that's what these scriptures talk about. Yeah. Uh, this is in, um, I've gone over to Philippians chapter 4. And everything I'm reading today is from the Passion Translation. Um, and so it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Uh, the New King James says, Be anxious for nothing. Mm. Nothing. That's what God tells us. That's his instruction to us. We simply need to obey. The flesh, the flesh uh, enjoys being anxious about things, but that's not what he tells us to do. He said, be anxious for nothing. Don't, don't worry about a thing. And of course, only he can help us do that. We can't do that on our own. But he supernaturally intervenes. I was thinking as we were worshiping that, that, um, it was something Kim, the prophet Kim Clement uh, used to declare. Um, oh. You know what? Excuse me, it'll come back. I'll continue on because it escaped my mind at the moment. All right, so it goes on to say, be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Saturated, you know? I know in another place it says that the souls of the priest shall be satiated. That's the same thing as saturated. And every one of us, the scripture says, is a priest before the Lord. We are kings and priests before the Lord. You know, that when we take that time, because he's first, and we've, we've many of us, thank God, have been reinvigorated to experience that during this time that we have been uh, mm -hmm. in our homes before the Lord. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. So you have a right heart before him. You're grateful, even though you haven't seen it yet. But these are faith-filled requests and communing with God, with his presence and song of love all over you. Tell him every detail of your life. You may not even be speaking it out when you're in God's presence. Your heart is just being poured out before him. When you're pouring out your heart before him, guess what? It's all, all the fears, concerns, anxieties, anxiousness, all of it is going from you to him. Yeah. yeah. Which is where it's supposed to be. It's not like dumping on a friend. You know, you're not dumping. You're in the position that we're called to be of casting our cares upon the Lord, giving it all over to him. And when we give it over to him, it leaves us yeah. and it goes to him. Mm -hmm. We get free. We get free. So it says, and then, okay, tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. This is a time, and it's all the time, 
but particularly right now in this season when there's so many uh, spirits and people and things vying for your attention, it's time to give it to him so that the peace which passes all human understanding can fill you and you know it's supernatural. You know it's supernatural because you know you wouldn't be in that place without him. Mm. And that's where we all need to be. Hallelujah. That's the preparation of our hearts. When we do that, every one of us take the initiative to do that. Wow, when we come together and then we get united as the family of God, whoa, watch out. <laughs> you know, he said there's a great awakening coming. We're prepared. We're prepared for that. But it's hearing. When everything becomes quiet, then we can hear the sound of his voice speaking to us. And we know that we know that we know that it's him. And our heart is settled. And we are confident. We are confident this is what God has said to me. And now I know, I know who I am, I know where I'm going, and I'm going to do it with gusto before the Lord. That's where he's calling us. Amen. Well, I'm going to take it from here. I, I had several scriptures I wanted to share with you regarding, you know, hearing God's voice and um, reassuring you that, look, if you're a believer, if you're born again, scripture declares that you are hearing his voice. I didn't say that. The Bible says that, you know. Right. That's the reason why there's always going to be contention between people who are born again, spirit-filled and saved, and those who are not. Okay, and, I, and I, I, sometimes I forget that. All of a sudden, I get in, caught in a battle and I think, wait a second, wait a second. I'm dealing with people who, who don't think the way I do. They don't hear what I hear. You know, they don't know God the way I do. Therefore, that's why they're operating the way they are. And so, in Psalms... Uh, 95, if you got your Bible, turn to Psalm 95, and here's what it says. The sea is his, uh, verse 5, the sea is his, for it was he who made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. And then it says that ends verse 7, something unique that I didn't see until I was reading this, and that verse ends with, today if you would hear his voice. Interesting. Verse 8 finishes the thought. But verse 7, after being identified as the, the um, people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands, we're his sheep. And then it says, today if you would hear his voice. Well, that's a direct tie-in to John chapter 10. And I want you to turn there. And I didn't see that connection until I read read that passage actually this morning. John chapter 10, and I'm going to start reading, I'm going to read um, verse 20, start reading in verse 26. Uh, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So that passage back in Psalms says, today if you hear his voice, we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. And and today, if you hear his voice, ah, so the Old Testament recognizes that the sheep will be able to hear his voice. And then Jesus affirms it in John chapter 10 and verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. It's a direct connection back to Psalms 95, 7. My sheep, I know them and they follow me. So because you're a sheep of Jesus, Hear what I'm, what I'm saying, because this is a, it's very key. You are, you have the ability to hear his voice. The thing is, the reason we don't hear is there are so many other voices around us that are vying for our attention. Yes. You know, there are a lot of natural voices. The world, the flesh, and the devil all have their own voice. Mm -hmm. And they will scream very, very loud at times. But there's a passage of scripture that says... Uh, um, um, that the, the prophet Elijah goes up and he's in the mountain and, and the storm passes by and the rocks are rent 
and it says, and, and the Lord, and the voice of the Lord, the Lord was not in the earthquake, and the Lord was not in the breaking of the rocks, and the Lord was not in the fire, and the Lord was not in, you know, the, 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 the hurricane that blew by. And then it says, and then there was the sound of a still, small voice. And it says that the prophet wraps himself in his cloak, and he goes out, and, he, and God begins to speak to him. So because you have all these other voices that are out there, they are there, they are, are uh, um, crying out, they're trying to grab our attention, they are trying to distract and misdirect us. Correct. Yeah. Once you hear the voice of God yeah. and Jesus stands in the middle of your storm and he speaks, you're going to find peace. So that's why it's so vital to um, hear his voice and have his direction in our life. Luke 24 gives a very unique insight. How do I know when it is that God is speaking to me? I want you to turn to Luke 24, and, and that's the last chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Verse 20, uh, uh, chapter 24, in verse 23, it talks about the, um, whoop, is that the one I wanted? Uh, let me see, Luke 24, 32, excuse me, 24 and verse 32. Um, it's about the disciples, and they were walking on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus appears to them, and they don't recognize him. See, a lot of times, Christ comes into our life in a different way. We don't recognize him. It says that he walked with them and then they encouraged him to stay with them and they were going to break bread and share, have, have a, a share a meal and they were going to stay with them. And it says that in the breaking of the bread, their eyes were opened and then Jesus disappeared from their sight. So we, then they say, the disciples say this in verse 31 and 32, then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. Verse 32, they said to one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? You'll know when you're hearing the voice of God because it will cause your heart to catch on fire. Yeah. All of a sudden, a passage of scripture will just catch on fire. Maybe you're reading, maybe you're listening to a sermon, maybe you're in, deep in a place of worship and, and some of the words come out and all of a sudden your heart just bursts into flame. It catches on fire. We're not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road while he was explaining the scriptures to us. You will know that it is the voice of God because it causes your heart to burst into flame. You become excited. Uh, um, it, it brings a fresh vision. It gives a fresh understanding. And all of a sudden, your spirit is just like ignited because of the word that you heard. Man, I've heard some words like that in my life. Sometimes it was God spoke directly to me Sometimes it was I was listening to a preacher. Sometimes I was hearing a wonderful, passionate, deep worship song. But I recognized the truth and the power of that thing. Why? Because the fire of God got ignited inside of me. So you'll know you're hearing this voice, number one, when your heart catches on fire. Any of you that have had that experience, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's how you know that you know that it was God. It's a great passage of scripture. Go to Luke chapter 1. Same, same book. Um, go to Luke chapter 1. And a beautiful passage of scripture. Um, and Luke chapter 1, and I am going to start reading in, I think, maybe around verse 40. I'm going to start in verse 39. Now at this time, Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country to the city of Judah and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Now remember, that those were her cousins, okay? And Zechariah and Elizabeth were the high priest. Zechariah was the high priest and she had been barren. And all of a sudden, God performs a miracle. Zechariah is silent. 
because he didn't believe God, but uh, his wife, Elizabeth, believed God. She gets pregnant, and this is now months later. Mary comes to visit her, all right? And look at verse 41. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. When I know I'm hearing something that comes from God, in the womb of my spirit, something will leap. I will have feel a fresh infeeling of the presence of God, of the Holy Spirit. There, there's a something that happens when I know I'm hearing from God. There's a <laughs> kick in the womb of my spirit, Amen. and it, it just, I just, I feel this, uh, this kick within me, and I know, whoa, I just heard from the Lord. I just heard somebody, I heard something that came from God. I might not understand exactly what it is, but I know there was a kick in the womb of my spirit because my spirit connected with God's spirit. And when your spirit connects with the Holy Spirit, there's going to be a kick in the womb of the spirit and something in you, any that's in you that's alive from God is gonna recognize it and rejoice. So your heart may catch on fire and, and, and be inflamed with fresh revelation, or you may be filled with the joy of the Lord. You may have a kick in the womb of your spirit and have a fresh infilling, a fresh relationship with God starts because you heard. You Amen. might not have recognized it at first, but all of a sudden the reality of it hits you and it works a change. See, when that baby kicked in her womb, that baby recognized that womb. That, and it's interesting to say that that was John the Baptist. And it said that John the Baptist would be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. So it was the spirit in that baby kicked, kicked something in the baby. That baby kicked something in the mother. <laughs> and the mother speaks the word of God. It brings something. When you really hear from God, it sets up a chain reaction and great things are going to happen Hallelujah. all because yeah. you know Ooh. you heard from the Lord. Glory. Mm, these, are, these are good little nuggets. I want you Hallelujah. to get these things. That's how you know you're hearing from God. I just want to say this because it goes right with that. I remembered what the prophet Kim Clement said and it goes with what my husband is saying right now because when we hear the word like that, he said, I anticipate the inevitable supernatural intervention of God. And when we hear the word like that and experience it in all the different ways, my husband is saying there's an anticipation yeah. that he's coming forth and he's going to do his will. And it's very, very exciting because that's when we have a knowing that resides within us and then God's will manifests before our eyes. Amen. The next way I know that I'm, hearing something from God, and it kind of ties together with, with what's been said, but I want you to turn to Psalm 119 and look at verse 105. It's beautiful. There's an understanding here that I want you to get. That's how you know, gee, I heard this from the Lord. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet. All right, when I'm hearing the voice of God, where I'm walking gets illuminated. Psalm 119 and verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet. So the word of God always enlightens where I'm supposed, to, where I'm currently walking. But it says it's a light to my path. Not only does it illuminate where I, my next footstep's going to be, but it illuminates the path and I see a vision for where I'm going. I know I'm hearing from God when all of a sudden my, my, where I'm walking and where God's taking me begins to be illuminated. All of a sudden there's light when there was confusion before. There's clarity when there was darkness before. I mean, it is a, it's a powerful, powerful passage of scripture that allows us to hear and see beyond what we naturally could. When I'm walking in darkness and I'm in confusion, when my path is not clear and I'm not really certain, God, what's happening now? When I hear his word, boom, in an instant, all of that changes. He, the light, the lamp 
lights up my feet. His word is a lamp that lights my feet. And that's my initial footstep where I am right now. And his word is a light to my path. That's like a searchlight, a, a, a large, a, a sweeping light that illuminates the future and where I'm headed. When I hear his voice, there's light that comes. Amen. Confusion is gone. The other voices can easily be discerned because we know, does that voice give you any light? How do you know someone that's speaking is speaking from God? Does that voice yeah. give you light? That's right. Or does it bring you confusion? Does that voice, is that voice filled with faith or is it filled with fear? That's how you know whether you're hearing from God or not. So the voices that you're listening to, you simply ask the question, does this bring me more light? Does this illuminate my path? Mm -hmm. uh, does this, is this, are these words of faith that make me feel secure, that give clarity and give me an understanding? If the answer is no, then you're listening to the wrong voice. Pretty simple. Go, if you would, to um, 1 Kings chapter 19. I want to go to 1 Kings. And let's see, 1 Kings chapter 19. And this is the scripture that I referred to um, just a moment ago. This is the prophet. And he goes to Horeb. This is Elijah the prophet, and he's on Horeb, all right, in the mountain of God. Starting in verse 9. Then he came there for, to a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant and torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Sometimes it seems like you might be the only one that really wants to walk this thing out correctly. But the bottom line is, you go on and hear, see what happens. So he said, go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by and a great and strong wind was rending the mountains and breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. So you may have tumultuous circumstances that come around and, and, and at that moment you think, God, I have to hear from you now. I'm in desperate need. I'm under attack. Um, our finances, have, I, I've got to hear from you now. No, sometimes the storm has to rage around you because what does a storm do? Well, it strips us down to the basics. And there are times when we don't hear the voice of God immediately in the middle of a storm because there are things that God's trying to teach us. It's what a bodybuilder calls progressive resistance. You know, when you go into the gym, start out with a 50-pound weight, and then you go to a 60, and then a 70, and, and, and each progressive weight makes you stronger and stronger. And sometimes God takes us through the storm, and he doesn't speak to us immediately because he wants to make changes in us. And it takes a great and mighty wind rending the mountain and breaking in pieces the rocks that are in us before we're prepared to hear what God wants to say. He changes the mountain, everything around Elijah first, before Elijah hears, all right? But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. So he goes from bad to worse. He's surrounded by a tumultuous storm. There's multitudes of voices. The wind is ripping. The rocks are being torn apart. But, but he didn't hear the voice of God in that then an earthquake comes. I mean, we've been experiencing an earthquake, if you will. God has shaken up the church and he's shaken up people and he's causing them. We've experienced an earthquake. And sometimes even in the earthquake, I don't yet, I'm not yet ready to hear the voice of God. It says, the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. That's verse 11, verse 12. After the earthquake, a fire I mean, think of all the different things he's going, think of all the things that you may have been through. You know, tumultuous wind, my mountain's been torn apart, earthquake, you know, everything that was solid that I was holding on, that's been shaken apart. And what's left gets burned with fire. It's like, what else can happen? And God is still not speaking to him in the midst of all of that. Why? Because he needs to get him to a place of settledness. Yeah. He's stripping away 
Sometimes we don't hear God's voice because he's simply stripping away all the stuff that has been a distraction, all the wrong foundations and rocks that we built our life on get broken in the earthquake. All of the wood, hay, straw, and stubble that we built with gets burned up in the fire. And what's left? Well, let's say, let's see what it says. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, and here's what it says in the King James, the sound of a still small voice. One of them says, the New American Standard says, a gentle blowing. But the word there literally means the a whispered voice. When you whisper, there's a, a small amount of breath that comes out of your mouth. That's the context that's there. A whispered voice. God can speak to us in a whispered voice. And look at what it says. And then he said, uh, and when Elijah heard it, ah, uh, when he heard the whispered voice of God, after the earthquake has gone, after the hurricane has gone through and the tornado has ripped things up and the earthquake has broken all the foundations in his life and the fire has come and burned up all the natural things and wood, hay, and stubble, and it's just him stripped down and left. It says, Elijah heard it. First, he wrapped his face in his mantle. Isn't that interesting? He wrapped his face in his mantle. Well, what is your mantle? What is it that hangs over your life, that, that protects you? Well, it's the presence of God. The mantle that he wrapped himself in represents the anointing of God. It represents the authority of God. Yeah. The mantle represents the anointing of God in a man's life or a woman's life. Wrap yourself in the anointing, in Amen. the presence of God. Yes, yes. And it says, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Let me paraphrase that. He wraps himself after going through all of the conflict, the burning, the earthquakes, the rending of the winds, the breaking of the rocks, and it's just him. It says he comes out of his cave, he wraps his head in his anointing, in his mantle, in, his, in the presence of God. He finds his solace in the presence of God. He comes out of his hidden spot, his cave, and then he hears the voice of God clearly saying to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? I'll paraphrase the word, what are you doing here? Do you know why you're here? Do you realize what you've been through? Do you understand you've just been through a process? God asks a question, not because he doesn't know the answer. He asks the question to us because he wants to draw something to our attention. So Elijah is brought to the place where all that's left is him and his mantle, his anointing, the presence of God, and the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you come to that place where it's just you, the anointing of God that's placed in your life, and the word of the Lord, none of those other voices will be heard. That's right. None of those other voices will even matter. Things that used to get you, used to get me so frustrated and flustered and upset. Now it's like they're laughable. Why? Because I've been through the earthquake. You understand? I've been through the fire. I've been through the rending, the wind that rent and torn my life over. I've been through all of that. Now I'm at peace because I'm wrapped in the mantle of who I am. Yeah. And I've clearly heard the voice of God and nothing offends me. Nothing shakes me. Nothing gets me all upset because I know his voice calms every storm. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, these are powerful principles. If you get them and you apply them, it's going to help you hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to give you two more scriptures and then we're going to let you go. Go to Psalms 46 and verse 10. Guess what? Psalms 46. I've got it right here. Ah. In the Passion Translation. Ah. Psalm we'll 46, and I'm going to read verse 10, and here's what it says. 
it says, um, uh, now isn't that interesting? I'm going to start reading actually um, verse 9 because we've just been talking about going through all this conflict. And look at, I just noticed verse 9, which ties in beautifully with what I just said. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. Stops the war inside of you. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. Everything that wants to harm you, he breaks and tears out of the way. He burns the chariots with fire. Everything that's going to come against you, the fire comes. See, all of that rending and breaking, it's all designed to clean your life so that it's easier to hear the voice of God. And then he says, cease striving. That word means to stop wrestling. Stop forcing the issue. It means to relax. One of the words literally means to go limp. When a young baby falls asleep, when my, my sons were young, I would pick them up and go to put them in bed, and they were just like these limp rag dolls. That's what that word, part of that word means to be limp and to completely almost uh, be disjointed and fall apart. I mean, the word is a place of absolute, total, complete, surrendered rest. Cease striving, and until you hit the place where you are limp and relaxed and completely undone, you can't, it says, cease striving and no. The word no is a very intimate word. All right, it means a personal, firsthand, intimate knowledge of God. So when I want to hear, I can't know his voice. I can't know that he is God until I'm in this place of utter and complete abandoned rest. I'm just limp. I am just completely relaxed and unhurried and unpressured and God has overwhelmed me and it's like, the only way I can describe it, in the middle of the winter sometimes we would go into the Y and there's a real nice hot whirlpool that is there. And before I get into that whirlpool, my muscles are a little achy and my joints are a little achy and I'm, I'm like, oh, I don't like this cold. But the minute I step into that whirlpool, whew, I see striving. My, everything in me unwinds, all of my muscles relax, my joints relax, and it's just like, Oh, this just feels so good. That's the position God wants you to be in so that you can know his voice. And in that place, you will hear with ease and clarity. And I had the same verse in um, the Passion Translation. And again, it's similar. It says it in a different way, which brings some more light to the scripture it says, surrender your anxiety. Be silent and stop your striving. Well, this is where the peace that we've been talking about has kicked in and everything has stopped. You know, when you're sitting there in this peace that my husband and I are talking about, it's palpable. It's palpable. You can you can feel it, and you know that the Prince of Peace has entered in. Amen. And that nothing is going to stop who he is or what he wants to say to you. Amen. So, so when you're in this place of peace, that word to know is the Hebrew word yada. And it, again, it's a very intimate word. It's the word that's used that, that said, and Adam knew Eve, and she bore a son, yada. It's a, very, it's a very intimate, personal word where you give birth to things. And so when I'm in that relaxed place with God, my anxieties have been washed away. The storm has done what it needed to do. The fire has come and I survived. The earthquake came and I survived. You know, the, the hurricane and tornado blew through and I survived. Why? Because God is with me. What shall I fear? What shall man do to me? So I'm in that place of peace. Once I find that, I can know his voice and know that he is God. God always speaks to his children. My sheep hear my voice. So you're, the voice of God becomes clear. You may not hear it in the middle of the storm, but you will hear it when you wrap yourself like the prophet did in his mantle. You come out of your cave, out of your self-protection place and become vulnerable before God and then his voice will come to you 
and he'll speak to you what you exactly what you need to hear. And the rest of that verse, because we know we're dealing with something that's local, but we're also dealing with something that's global. And so again, it says, surrender your anxiety, be silent and stop your striving and you will see that I am God. See, we'll see, we'll hear. And then I love it that it says right after that, I am the God above all nations and I will be exalted throughout the whole earth. So when we come to that place where there's that stillness that only he can give us, nobody and nothing can give us that stillness, that peace, that rest. We know that not only is he taking care of us personally, not only is he taking care of our beloved, but that he is intervening on the globe. It says he will be exalted in all the nations. Yeah. Amen. If, you're, if you've got your Bible, turn to Psalm 127. And I'm going to close with two passages of Scripture that kind of just jumped in my heart. Everything we do is about building the kingdom. Everything we do is, is about uh, hearing the voice of God and understanding how God speaks to us and what it is he's trying to say. In, ver in Psalm 127, it says something very unique. And in, in verse 2... It says, it is vain for you to rise up early to retire late. In other words, do stuff by your own effort. It's vain. It's vain if you, I'm gonna, I am going to make God speak to me. No, that is not going to happen. You have to position yourself to be able to hear his voice. Yes. It says, to eat the bread of painful labors. I'm just going to work harder. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to, no, that's a system of works. And that's not going to cause you to hear the voice of God. It says, to eat the bread of painful labors. Look at what it says at the end of verse two. For he gives to his beloved even in his sleep. So if God can't speak to you because you're so busy when you're awake, maybe the only way he can speak to you is when you're sound asleep and you're unconscious and you're out of the picture and then he'll begin to give you dreams and visions. Many times God speaks to Esther and me and he gives us dreams. Yeah. Perhaps because we've been so busy during the day, we couldn't hear him, couldn't hear his voice, and so his voice will come to you in a dream. I want to encourage you, keep a notebook by your bedside. And when a dream comes that's very clear, a lot of times for Esther and I, um, I'll, I'll wake up in the morning, and then when I fall back to sleep, and I'm sort of half in sleep and half out of sleep, and I'm in kind of that twilight area, all of a sudden, boom, a, yeah. a, uh, a dream will come that I recognize, whoa, that is the Lord, because yeah. it was vivid, it was in color, and, and it, it was, I, I woke up, and this thing was as clear as when I first saw it, and we write those down because we know that is God's word that's coming to us. Yeah. That's God speaking to us. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hear the voice of God, I want to encourage you, go back and, and take some notes on what we shared today because in this day and season, it is so important for you to know what the voice of God is. If you don't know the voice of God, you are going to yield to your own emotions, and your emotions will scream some really loud things at you, especially if you're in a moment of crisis. If you don't know the voice of God, he may speak to you through others, but others may also pull you in the wrong direction because they're all wound up. My sheep hear my voice. You need to build your relationship with God, yeah, and you do that through prayer, through study of the word, and, in, and that'll allow you to position yourself so that you will know his voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They know me and I know them. Listen, God loves you. You're a sheep of his. You are known by him and, and, and uh, he is known of you. Listen, God's gonna speak to you. He wants to speak to you more than you wanna hear him. And I say that because sometimes he speaks things we don't wanna hear. <laughs> and, and I could actually, I could actually feel that earlier on, just a little while ago when we were ministering, I felt the longing of the Father 
to be with you and to speak with you. You know, you know how parents long for their children when they're apart for them Amen. from them. They just long for their children. They want to be with them. They want to enjoy their presence and they want to share what's in their heart and mm. whatever the children have to say. And and how much more the heavenly Father who created each and every one of us, he has a longing to be with you and to hear the sound of your voice before him and yeah. then to be still with you so that he can impart the sound of his voice to yeah. you and then then there's joy there's joy unspeakable and full of glory Amen. because we were made for his pleasure and that we get the pleasure of his presence when we commune with him amen and the exchange of that voice is is the highest thing in all the earth because then it brings about the will of god we're doing the will of god that's why we're ministering this word today because god laid it on our heart together yeah. we know that we all need to cultivate our hearts to hear the sound of god's voice and then together we'll do the will of god and Amen. we're going to do that when we come together uh, face to face in the church. Yes, That's very will. exciting. Yes, That's it coming is. coming up. Yeah. So <laughs> cultivate your relationship with God. Esther and I spend a lot of time uh, praying in the Holy Spirit. That's God's perfect prayer language for you, for me. Yes. <clears throat> cultivate hearing his voice by praying. Why? Because the Spirit of God prays according to the will of God for you, yes. whatever it is that might ah. be blocking you from hearing God's voice, God's spirit knows. So spend copious amounts of time praying in the Holy Spirit, releasing uh, uh, yourself up before God and just sing, sing in the Holy Spirit, pray in the Holy Spirit. Just get into his presence and allow the spirit of God to open up whatever it is that's blocking your ability to hear, and, and it will revolutionize your life. And I need to say this because I felt it very strong again, that if you are someone who has not been filled with the Holy Spirit, I just felt to say, I don't know who you are, but I felt to say, call us this week, and we will pray with you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that makes all the difference. He takes us beyond our natural mind, into the realm of the spirit to bring down the kingdom of God and make things right. You know, the scripture Amen. says that the Holy Spirit guides us into all the truth. He guides us into all the truth. And when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we pray in other tongues, then um, again, we're not praying anything that we're thinking of. We're praying what the Holy Spirit is directing us to pray. And you know when you conclude that kind of prayer that you have prayed according to the will of God. Right. So go back and take a look at John 10, 27. Get that scripture in your heart. You are one of his sheep. My sheep hear my voice. Jesus does not lie. So if That's you're right. not hearing his voice, you need to reposition yourself just like the prophet did. He came out of his cave, he wrapped himself in his mantle, and it says, and then the word came to him, he came out of hiding. Whatever it is, whatever cave you're in, it's time to come out. Whatever circumstance you're in, it's time to come out and stand before the Lord, and you're gonna hear his voice with purity and clarity. Start to pray in tongues in, a, in, in copious amounts every single day. You know, turn off the radio, turn off the television, uh, um, and, and Get alone with God when you're riding your bicycle, when you're out for a walk. Come on, when you're, maybe you're on your way to work. Just pray in tongues. And, and all of a sudden, he's gonna give you a breakthrough. He's the God of the breakthrough. He's gonna break open that, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. There's a breaking open that will come, that will not only, through praying in tongues, release what God wants to say through you and to you, but he'll speak back it's communication is always reciprocal. I speak, God speaks back. As his sheep, my ear is in tuned. If I've got other voices, I'm going to miss. So position yourself to hear. <laughs> oh, okay. Go I ahead. just want to say a little more that was in my heart. Just think about it. For those of you, maybe you've been what people call worry warts all your life. And you think, oh, that seems like an impossible place. But the scripture is true. As my husband said, Jesus doesn't lie. 
the word of God is not a lie. It's, it's the truth. And as Philippians said, be anxious for nothing. It's a supernatural place that we can go to, that the Holy Spirit takes us there, and we can learn to abide in that place so that we can continually hear the voice of God. It's, it's an astounding place that we give God praise for. He's given us the honor to enter into that place and live there, which is above the fray, above the lies, above the accusations of the enemy, and to the freedom of the Holy Spirit. So again, I'm going to conclude with uh, the, the truth. You're a sheep. You're following Jesus. You don't follow man. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, both in the Old Testament in Psalm 95, 7, and in John 10, 27. There are parallel passages of Scripture. Because you're a sheep of God, you are hearing his voice. You simply need to silence all the other voices Position yourself in the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. Yeah. Get silent before God. Come out of the cave that you've you've protected yourself in and come and stand before the Lord, and you're going to begin to hear his voice. We are excited oh, yeah. because this is a day and season yes. where we need to follow his leading and not the voice Thank of you, man. Jesus. God bless you. We love you. We love you. We believe Thank that uh, the best is yet to come, baby. Hallelujah. Some good things are Woo. just on the horizon, Glory and we're going to gonna be recipients of them. Um, I'll I'll share one thing with you as we close this thing. You may have noticed that you know I've got some internet stalkers that have <laughs> have been coming after me again, um, and I know even though I blocked them, they're still coming after me. So I would encourage you when you see their posts come up, I want to I want to make a commitment. I'm going to pray for them. Oh yeah. And when their inner when their posts come up and they're angry and they're aggressive and they're argumentative and they're contentious, what I want you to do is when you see them, right then stop and start to pray for them. Pray for their salvation, pray for their their life, yeah. pray for uh, um, uh, God to bless them and for, for them to have an experience with God because they're probably operating out of a place of fear. And, and we just don't live there. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So you want to pray for them. It was upsetting me at, at first, and then I realized where it was coming from, all right? And then I realized, okay, what God is doing is he's bringing these people into my path because he wants me to pray for them. And that happens to us on a very, very regular basis. Yeah. So become part of my prayer intercessory team for those people that, that their, 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 their names pop up and they post these hard, harsh, critical, nasty, negative, contentious things. Just take them on as a prayer uh, 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 petition, if you would. I'm going to be praying for them and everyone that is one of the friends on my Facebook. Let's get an army of people praying for these guys that God yeah. will give them the freedom and breakthrough that they need. Amen. Uh, we're blessed. Amen. Amen. Well, we love all of you. We pray that you are going to have an absolutely awesome day. Get out and enjoy the weather. I was out and took a motorcycle ride. Esther and I took a nice, great big walk. We've ridden our bicycles. It is wonderful. The summer weather has finally gotten here. So get outside. Go with your family. Go have a picnic. Uh, just enjoy the day and, and thank God for the blessings of a president who loves us Hallelujah. and who's standing with the Christians of the nation. Uh, thank God that we have a leader of our nation who really understands the importance of the corporate gathering. We are blessed and honored. So pray for our president, pray for our governors and leaders that they always make the right decisions. We are honored, blessed, and we're thankful. And God is doing a new thing, and we get to partake of it by doing everything that's been talked about today. We give him praise and glory for making Amen. the avenue so we can partake of that new fresh Amen. and living thing from him. Hallelujah. Well, you have a blessed and wonderful day and uh, we will be seeing our worship team on Tuesday night. And uh, a reminder also, Tuesday morning at about 10 o'clock, I do 10 to 10.30. I'm sorry, I'm depends on the day how busy I am. I do my, my online Bible study and we are in the book of Genesis right now. It's been a great study. So I would encourage you to join me if you can. And that is both on my YouTube page and on my Facebook page, if the internet's all working correctly. So that's under William Emmons. So we'd love to have you join in that as well. So God bless you.
That's Tuesday. You shipped it. Or Wednesday. Tuesday? Excuse me. Did I say Tuesday? Okay. Thank you. Wednesday. <laughs> sorry. Wednesday between 10 and 1030. Um, I log on and start my study. So I'd uh, love to have you join me. And uh, it's always been a blessing to share the word of God and see it just go out. It's time for the church to take over the airwaves. And that's Amen. what's happening right now. This shakeup that's come, shakeup thing, it's been great because we are out. The churches, many millions, thousands of them are now on the airwaves and they're saturating it with the truths of God. And we've, not, we've no longer surrendered the airwaves to the devil. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, have a great day. We love you. We will see you next week. Love you. God, God bless. bless you. Give each other a hug when you see them. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye.